Okay, <clears throat> so chapter 11 is all about systems of equations and inequalities. Um, so today's lesson is really just a review lesson, um, stuff that we've learned in Algebra 1, Algebra 2. Um, and then the remaining lessons from here on out, we're going to be learning how to solve systems by using uh, matrices. Um, so right now we're just going to go through the old method of solving systems and then um, from now on after this lesson we are going to use uh, the matrix to solve um, systems of inequalities, uh, e equations and inequalities. So follow along with the notes. Um, it's just a review. It says a system of equations is a collection of two or more equations each containing one or more variables. Um, and examples of um, systems, you have three systems there. Just a note in the book, you'll see that they will have this brace here to indicate it's a system and not just two random equations. So you know to solve it. Um, so look what it says here. It says a solution of a system of equations consists of values for the variables that are solutions of each equation of the system. To solve a system of equations means to find all solutions of the system. When a system of equations has at least one solution, it is said to be consistent. When a system of equations has no solution, it is called inconsistent. Now, actually what I want you to do is to look at the three systems here. Um, we could actually solve system 1 and system 2. We cannot solve system 3. Now system 3 has three variables but only two equations. In order to fully solve a system, you need to have um, the same number of uh, equations as you do variables. You can't have less equations than you can have variables. It's okay to have more than um, it's okay to have more than the number of equ it's okay to have more equations than the number of variables, but you cannot have more variables than the number of equations. So now let's talk about uh, how it looks like geometrically. So here we have a system that has one solution. And um, when it has one solution, uh, we could say that the system is consistent and also it's independent. Okay. Um, the second thing is we have parallel lines. And so the system has no solution, it is inconsistent. So um, consistent means you have a solution, inconsistent means you don't have a solution. Now the last one, um, the two equations, uh, so this is consistent because there is um, actually a solution, but there are infinitely many solutions and we call this system uh, dependent. So we're going to review just uh, the techniques to solving uh, linear equations. Um, the so we're not really going to do DIYs for the first four examples because you already kind of know how to do this. Uh, quick review, so just follow along. Uh, we want to go through the substitution and the elimination method. So I have 2x plus y is equal to negative 1. And then we have negative 4x plus 6y is equal to 42. Now, um, we're going to use substitution here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to solve one of the equations for uh, one of the variables. Now, obviously, one equation looks much easier to solve for a variable, and that's equation 1. We could just subtract 2x from both sides, and we'll get y by itself. So if I take equation 1, 2x plus y is equal to negative 1, and I subtract 2x from both sides, I get y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. Okay. And then what I do now is I'm going to take this y is equal to negative 2x minus 1, and I'm going to substitute it in to the y of the other equation. Okay. So I'm going to take the second equation and plug negative 2x minus 1 in for y. So I get negative 4x plus 6, negative 2x minus 1 is equal to 42. And I just do my algebra. And I get negative 16x 
um, minus 6 is equal to 42. And then I add uh, 6 to both sides, and I get negative 16x is equal to 48. I divide negative 16 on both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 4. Huh? Oh, sorry. x is equal to negative 3. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug it back into uh, this equation here where it says y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. If I plug in x for that, I could get y. Now, you don't have to plug it into this one. You could plug it into this one or that one, but this one is already, already, it's already solved for y, so you can easily find y. So y is equal to negative 2 times negative 3 minus 1. And so I get y is equal to 6 minus 1, y is equal to 5. So our solution is uh, negative 3, 5. Now, most of the time, we will write our solution for a system as an ordered pair. So my solution is negative 3, 5. Okay. Uh, so that's example 1. If we go to example 2, um, we're going to do one by elimination. And this one's actually a word problem. So um, most of your homework on the two by two systems will be word problems um, because we want you to practice changing uh, these word problems into equations. So um, example two says, uh, a movie theater sells tickets for $10 each, with seniors receiving a discount of $2. One evening, the theater sold 525 tickets and took in $4,630 in revenue. How many of each type of ticket were sold? Well, if the tickets are $10 each and seniors receive a discount of $2, that means the senior ticket is $8. Okay? So, um, one equation that I can write is... Okay, so here we're going to let x represent the number of regular tickets. And we're going to have y equal, uh, represent the number of senior tickets. So um, I'm going to write <clears throat> a system of equations, and I know that if the regular ticket cost $10, and if I add that to the senior tickets, each senior ticket is costing $8. So um, this would represent the total cost of regular tickets, this would represent the total cost of senior tickets, and I know the total uh, revenue that they had was $4,630. Um, since I have two variables, I need two equations. My other one is simply um, going to be they sold uh, this number of regular tickets and they sold this number of senior tickets and the total was they sold 525 tickets total. Okay. Now remember, when we use elimination, we want to eliminate one of the variables. So uh, the key here is to multiply... Um, to find an opposite pair. So for example, if this is 10x, we want this to be negative 10x. Now it doesn't matter which variable we choose, we could choose x or we could choose y. Um, but for now, let me just eliminate x. So I'm gonna multiply this entire equation by negative 10. And then this becomes negative 10x minus 10y is equal to um, negative 5,250. So um, now I have these two equations. Okay. If you want so you don't get confused, you can kind of cross this out so no, you're not dealing with that anymore. And then I'm just going to add the two equations up. So the x's get eliminated, and I'm left with negative 2y is equal to... Let me actually do that right now. negative 620. 
and then I divide both sides by negative 2, and I get y is equal to 310. Okay. So the number of senior tickets was 310. And then to go ahead and to solve for x, we just plug it into one of our equations. Now, um, it doesn't matter which equation we plug it into. I'm actually going to plug it into this cross out equation because that's one of our original equations. So I have x plus 310 is equal to 525. Subtract 310 from both sides. And I get x is equal to 215. Okay. So uh, my answer here is uh, 215 regular tickets sold. And 310 senior tickets sold. Okay. Um, since it's a real-world scenario, uh, I'm going to leave it as that and not put it as an ordered pair. Um, so that is uh, using elimination to solve a problem. Should be all a review to you. We've done this in Algebra 2. You've done it many times in Algebra 1. Okay, now let's go to example 3. Example 3 is... Uh, something different is going to happen. So let's solve 2x plus y is equal to 5 and then 4x plus 2y is equal to 8. Um, you can solve this however you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and do substitution for this one just because um, I want to show you both methods. So um, I'm going to change this equation 2x plus y um, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I get y is equal to negative 2x plus 5, and then I'm going to substitute that back into the y of the second equation. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative 2x plus 5 and substitute it into that y. So I get 4x plus 2, negative 2x plus 5 is equal to 8. So this becomes 4x minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 8. And now look what happens here. I have 4x and minus 4x. Okay? Those add up to 0, and I have 5 is equal to 8. Whenever this happens when you're solving systems, where you have an inconsistent equation, when you have something that is false, this is when you have an inconsistent system, and then this is where you could say um, this has no solution. No solution, or you could also just say it's inconsistent. Okay, um, take that down. And we're going to go on to example four, solving a system of dependent equations. And uh, for example four, we're going to express our answer in a different way than you're used to. So if I have 2x plus y is equal to 4, and negative 6x minus 3y, 2x plus y is equal to 4, and then 4 negative 6x minus 3y is equal to negative 12. Okay. This time I'm going to use elimination. So I'm going to multiply this equation by 3. Okay. So this equation becomes 6x plus 3y is equal to 12. And when I add, all, when I add these two equations up, I get 0 is equal to 0. Okay. So um, it's a true statement. No matter what, zero is equal to zero is a true statement. So the uh, so I know we usually put this in the past. We said that this had an infinite number of solutions. But um, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to.
what I'm going to do to express the solution here is when I say infinite number of solutions, that does really mean there's an infinite number. But it really, it still doesn't mean that I could plug in any numbers, right? Not all numbers will work to solve the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve one of these equations, either my original, um, so look at the equation 2x plus y is equal to 4. Okay. What I'm going to do to express the solution is I'm going to solve for one of the variables. And then get y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Okay. So whenever you have an infinite number of solutions, what you want to say your solution is all x, y such that y is equal to negative 2x plus 4 where x is a real number. Mm -hmm. So this tells me that y and x are still related. And as long as it satisfies this equation, then it will be a solution of this system. There are infinite number of things we could put in here, right? We could, as men, there's all real numbers will go into for x. And so we get an infinite number of solutions for y. But once again, not all, not all numbers, we can't just randomly assign numbers to them. Okay, it has to follow that equation. So all x, y, such that y is equal to negative 2x plus 4, where x is a real number. So that's the one thing that I want you to change when there's an infinite number of solutions, is to realize that, um, to put the solution in this form. Okay. Now we're going to move on to um, what some people considered a difficult last semester, um, and that was solving a system of equations containing three variables. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the, if you look at these drawings here, um, you'll see that the first thing on the top left, um, whenever we have an equation in three variables, we're talking about a plane, right? Uh, so, we have different scenarios that could happen. The top left scenario is when there's one solution, when the three planes intersect just at one point. Then the one on the right, that's right there, is if I have the three intersection, uh, if I have the three planes intersecting in a line, there are infinitely number of solutions. That whole line represents the solutions that can happen. And then the bottom are three different scenarios where you can get no solution, when um, the three planes are parallel, or that you don't have and you have. Two planes can intersect, but the third plane does not intersect at the uh, same point or same line. Okay. So um, what we're going to do here is we are going to see that um, we're going to try to solve one of these three by three systems. And remember, the key here is to get rid of one variable completely completely in the very beginning. Okay? So the first, um, I'm going to need more room for this. So the first problem is x plus y minus z is equal to negative 1. I have 4x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to 16. And then 2x minus 2y minus 3z is equal to 5. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate one of the variables there. Um, it really doesn't matter which one we eliminate. All we have to do is we have to... Um, okay. Uh, you just pick one that we're going to eliminate, okay? Sometimes it might be easier to eliminate one than the other, but in this problem, it looks like all three variables could be eliminated as easily. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, do x. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 1 and equation 2. Okay. And then... So I kind of want to go through, but I'm, I want to go slowly how to do this method. Um, 
And I know a lot of you will skip some of the steps that I do right in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the first equation and the second equation. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate x here. If I eliminate x here, I multiply the top equation by negative 4. And then now your new equation becomes negative 4x minus 4y plus 4z is equal to 4. Okay. And then when I add them up, I will get negative 7y plus 6z is equal to 20. Now what I'm going to do now is, if I did equation 1 and 2, I'm going to do now do equation 1 and 3. So if I have x plus y minus z is equal to negative 1, and I have 2x minus 2y minus 3z is equal to 5, um, I'm going to now eliminate the x here. You have to eliminate the same variable. Do not go ahead and try to eliminate a different variable. It has to be the same variable that was eliminated here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate x. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2. Okay. And then, sorry, for some of you that need that. Okay. This becomes negative 2x minus 2y plus 2z is equal to 2. And then when I add this up, this becomes negative 4y minus z is equal to 7. Now, the two resulting equations will become your new system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write negative 7y plus 6z is equal to 20 and add that to negative 4y minus z is equal to 7. I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by 6, okay, and then so this will become negative 24y minus 6z is equal to 42. I add these two equations up and I get negative 31y, the z's cancel, and I'm left with 62. I divide both sides by negative 31. And I get y is equal to negative 2. Okay. So that's my first solution. Now, what I do once I get y is equal to negative 2 okay, is I go back to one of these equations here, and I'm going to substitute that in to find my z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into this equation. Okay. So now this is where you work backwards. You're going to use back substitution all the way until you get to the original thing. So I'm going to take this equation here, and I get negative 4, and I'm going to substitute y in on uh, negative 2 in for y. Okay. And this becomes 8 minus z is equal to 7. I subtract 8 on both sides, and I get negative z is equal to negative 1. And so z is equal to 1. Okay. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this y, the z, and plug it into one of my original equations. I'm going to plug it into the first one, equation 1, right here. So um, let me just continue working here. If I take equation 1, or actually I'll just put it here, I'll have x plus y, y is negative 2, so this becomes x minus 2 minus 1 is equal to negative 1, and so this becomes x minus 3 is equal to negative 1, and so x is equal to 2. Okay? So I have my x, I have my y, and I have my z. So we can write that solution as 2, negative 2, and 1. So that is my 3 by 3 system.
So now I actually want you to do the DIY on your own on the next page. So this is where I'm going to ask the sub to pause the video and give you um, a couple of minutes. Um, some of you might take longer than others um, to finish this problem. Um, and then uh, unpause it when you're ready. Okay, so the DIY, we have a system of equations. A three by three again. So I have x minus two y plus three z is equal to seven. Two x plus y plus z is equal to four. Negative three x plus two y minus two z is equal to negative ten. Okay. Um, I could eliminate any variable that I want. Um, why don't we go ahead and eliminate a different variable this time? Now, actually, most of you probably did x. So I'm going to eliminate x. But I'm just saying that you could eliminate any variable that you want. Okay? So let me eliminate the x variable, since I'm assuming that's what most of you did. I'll x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 7. And 2x plus y plus z is equal to 4. I multiply this one by negative 2. I get negative 2x plus 4y minus 6z is equal to negative 14. Okay. I add these up and I get 5y minus 5z is equal to negative 10. So that's equations 1 and 2. Now I'm going to eliminate 1 and 3. So I have x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 7. And I have uh, negative 3x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to negative 10. Just on a side note, you don't always have to eliminate 1 and 2 and 1 and 3. You could eliminate something like 1 and 2 and 2 and 3, um, just as long as uh, you don't do the 2. You don't do, you don't do the same elimination twice. Okay? So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. And this gives me 3x minus 6y plus 9z is equal to 21. So this becomes negative 4y plus 7z is equal to 11. Okay. Oh, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write these two equations together. I'm going to multiply the top equation. Uh, since they're already uh, positive and negative here, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 4 and the bottom equation by 5. So my new equations become 20y minus 20z is equal to negative 40. And this becomes negative 20y plus 35z is equal to 55. Okay. When I add them up, I get 15z is equal to 15. Oh, it ended up being really nice. Okay. So if I divide both sides by 15, I get z is equal to 1. Okay. Now I'm going to plug that back into either equation. It doesn't really matter which one I do. So I'm going to plug it back into this one. So I get negative 4y plus 7 times 1 is equal to 11. Negative 4y plus 7 is equal to 11. I subtract 7 from both sides and I get negative 4y is equal to 4. I get y is equal to negative 1. And then I just plug that back into one of the equations. Uh, I'm going to pick equation 2. Um, so I'm going to get 2x minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. So this becomes 2x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 2. So my solution is 2, negative 1, 1. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and move on to a um, couple more examples. Uh, example six, 
Okay, so I hope you have all of that down. Now, I want to go over example six and example seven because we didn't really see these in algebra two. So uh, if I have 2x plus y minus z is equal to negative 2, then x plus 2y minus z is equal to negative 9, x minus 4y plus z is equal to 1. And actually what I am going to do is I'm going to eliminate z. Okay? So if I, because I, they're all, they all don't have a coefficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first equation, 2x plus y minus z equal to negative 2. x plus 2y minus z is equal to negative 9. I'm going to eliminate z, so I'm going to make one of them negative. I'll make the top one multiply by negative 1. And so this becomes negative 2x minus y plus z is equal to 2. And so I get uh, negative x plus y is equal to negative 7. Okay. Now, if I'm going to take equation uh, 1 and 3, I get 2x plus y minus z is equal to negative 2, and I'm going to eliminate x minus 4y plus z is equal to 1. So my z's cancel here, and I'm left with x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and oh sorry, this is supposed to be three x I believe. Three uh, x minus three y is equal to negative one. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two together. So I have negative x plus y is equal to negative 7, and 3x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. If I multiply the top equation by 3, I get negative 3x plus 3y is equal to negative 21. If I add the two equations together, I get 0 is equal to negative 22. That is a false statement, so I know this is uh, inconsistent. Okay. So uh, I remember when we did 3 by 3s in Algebra 2, we didn't really see the inconsistent and uh, dependent systems, but we're showing them to you now. Okay. So uh, now let's do example 7. Example 7 is where we're solving... Um, x minus 2y minus z is equal to 8. 2x minus 3y plus z is equal to 53, and 4x minus 5y plus 5z is equal to 53. Okay. So what I'm going to do is eliminate x from equations. Uh, I'm going to eliminate x this time around. So I have x minus 2y minus z is equal to 8 and 2x minus 3y plus z is equal to 53. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2, then negative 2x plus 4y plus 2z is equal to negative 16. Okay. So go ahead and add those together. Oh, sorry, there is a mistake here. I want you to change this one to 23, not 53. Please correct that mistake. Um, I'm looking at it now, and it should be 23 for the second equation, not 53. I messed that up. Okay, so um, if I go ahead and add these two equations together, I will get y plus 3z is equal to 7. Okay. Now let's do equation 1 and equation 3 together. 
So I have x minus 2y minus z is equal to 8, and then 4x minus 5y plus 5z is equal to 53. I multiply the first equation by negative 4. I get negative 4x plus 8y plus 4z is equal to negative 32. If I add the equations together, I will get 3y plus 9z is equal to 21. Now I can combine these two equations together and I'll get y plus 3z equals 7 and I get 3y plus 9z is equal to 21. I am going to multiply the top equation by negative 3 and I get negative 3y minus 9z is equal to negative 21. When I add this all up, I get 0 is equal to 0. So this is a dependent uh, solution. Okay. So remember, when I said that we have something that's dependent, okay, what we're going to do is uh, it has infinitely many solutions. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this equation for y. Okay. So I'm just going to go backtrack. So here's an equation. I'm going to solve this equation for y. So this equation becomes y is equal to negative 3z plus 7. Okay. And then now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to substitute this back into, uh, let's say my first equation. It doesn't matter which one we choose, but I'm going to choose equation 1. And um, I'm going to solve it in terms of x. Or I'm going to solve it in terms of either of the variables, but x is easier to solve for. So I'm going to have x minus 2, negative 3z plus 7, minus z is equal to 8. And this becomes x plus 6z minus 14 minus z is equal to 8. And so if I solve for x, what I end up getting, or wait, so this becomes x plus 5z is equal to 22. And then I'll solve for x, and x is equal to negative 5z plus 22. So let me show you how to write the solution for this. So. Um, I solve for y here, and then I solve for x. Now you see that both y and x are solved for z. Oh. So um, when I told you that you could solve for any variable when you put it back in, you actually should solve for, um, since I solved for y in terms of z here, when I plug it back into here, I should solve for x in terms of z. Um, make the entire solution in terms of one variable. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to show you what your uh, solution will look like. x, y, z, such that uh, y is equal to negative 3z plus 7, and where x is equal to negative 5z plus 22, where z is any real number. Okay. So... That is your solution. So uh, why don't you go ahead and do the DIY on your own. And then um, we're going to go over it. So this is where I want you to, do, to pause the video and have the students work on it for a little bit. Okay, so you have an equation x minus y minus z is equal to 1, 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to 2, 
now 3x plus 2y is equal to 0. Okay. So, interesting thing happens here. And hopefully you were able to do it even uh, though you really haven't seen it. Z, there is no z in equation 3. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I am going to eliminate z in equation 1 and 2 and then just use that with equation 3 for my new system. So I have x minus y minus z is equal to 1. 2x plus 3y plus z is equal to 2. If I eliminate z from here, I could just add everything up. This becomes 3x plus 2y is equal to 3. Then I'm just going to go ahead and combine that with my other equation here. So I have two equations, 3x plus 2y is equal to 3, and 3x plus 2y is equal to 0. I'm going to, subtract, I'm going to multiply this one by negative 1, and so this gets negative 3x minus 2y is equal to 0. I add everything up, and I get 0 is equal to 3, so this one is inconsistent. Okay, um, last one I want to do is example 8. Um, it's curve fitting, and this is just another form of seeing a uh, system of equations. So this equation, this problem, says find real numbers a, b, and c so that the graph of the quadratic function y is equal to 8x squared plus bx plus c contains the points negative 1, uh, negative 4, 1, 6, and 3, 0. Okay, so um, let's write down what we know. They have to satisfy the equation y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, now if it contains the points negative 1, 4, 1, 6, and 3, zeros, 3, 0, those represent your x and y. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and plug in um, the points. So at negative 1, negative 4, this equation becomes negative 4 is equal to a negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c. Okay? And so this equation turns into... Okay. This equation turns into negative 4 is equal to a minus b plus c. Okay. I know there's a glare there, but that says negative 4 is equal to a minus b plus c. You just solve this. Uh, I mean, you would just evaluate it. Okay. Now, if I substitute 1, 6, this becomes 6 is equal to a. 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. So this equation transforms into uh, 6 is equal to a plus b plus c. Okay. And then for the point 3, 0, I have 0 is equal to a 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. And that turns into 0 is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. Okay. And then now what we have is we have a system of equations that we can solve. I have um, a minus b plus c is equal to negative 4. a plus b plus c is equal to 6. And 9a plus 3b plus c is equal to 0. Okay. And then so uh, I could eliminate whatever I want. Let's eliminate, let's eliminate c. Okay. If I eliminate c, what my first system will turn into, so I have a minus b plus c is equal to negative 4. Okay. And then the second equation, um, since I'm running out of room, I'm not going to rewrite the first two equations. I'm just going to go ahead and do the operations. So the second equation, I'm going to multiply by negative 1 to eliminate the C. So this becomes negative A minus B minus C 
is equal to negative 6. And actually, look what happens when I add these two equations up. I get negative 2b is equal to negative 10. Okay. So this one actually made it a little bit easier because now I get b is equal to 5. Okay? So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take equation 1 and equation 3 and I'm going to eliminate c. So I get a minus b plus c is equal to negative 4. Multiply this one by negative 1. This is negative 9a minus 3b minus c is equal to 0. When I add this up, this becomes negative 8a minus 4b is equal to negative 4. But I already have what b is equal to here. b is equal to 5, so I'm going to substitute that in over here. So this becomes negative 8a minus 4 times 5 is equal to negative 4. Negative 8a minus 20 is equal to negative 4. I add 20 to both sides. I'm going to, I'm going to continue here. And this becomes negative 8a is equal to 16. Divide both sides by negative 8, and a is equal to negative 2. And then I have a, I have b. I just plug it into one of my equations here to get c. I'll plug it into equation 2. So I have negative 2 plus 5 plus c is equal to 6. 3 plus c is equal to 6, and so c is equal to 3. Okay. And then so um, a is negative 2, b is 5, and c is 3. So the quadratic function that contains those three points is going to be y is equal to negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay? So that is the equation that will contain the three points um, that was listed there. Okay?